next video about I hope you leave it on about uh, about making a weighted average cost of capital calculation you want to uh, figure out what the difference between the calculation and the target is or whenever you do a goal seek of course you can go to uh, tools what if and goal seek you could say let's just set this one equal to five that's fine of course it's fine but I'm gonna make a difference okay and that's what's gonna be in this next video and I'm gonna take the difference to be the calculation minus the target you know, and we want that difference to be equal to zero because then we can change anything and we don't have to, if we change the target to four or something, we can change that. So that's our goal seek macro. Now, all right, I'm not going to, I'm so tempted to color the cells. I, I'm sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to, oh, excuse me, yeah. I'm going to have to color the cells. So I have my generic macros right ready to open and okay and then I press shift control C and we can see well the targets an input and these these two things are an input and then we have the difference okay and then if we want to make the goal seek instead of making a normal goal seek I'm gonna hit this bat button or if you don't see this button you go to macros and view and record that button and then you name it when you name it it has to be one word, and it can't have a dollar sign in it, and it can't be A1 because that's a cell, and it can't be triple C5 or uh, BA4750 because those are all cell names, and it can't be named IRR. It can't be named a bunch of stuff. But for some reason, it can be named Goal Seek. And it can be named Goal Seek 1. Don't put this one this time. And then just press enter. And now you're recording. And this is the most important thing. It's like your phone. You turn your record button on your phone. And you don't want to make a picture of your feet. You only want to record exactly what you want. You want to get rid of the other stuff. So the only thing you want to do, you can't move things around. You go to what if analysis. And then you go to goal seek and you click on the difference and you make that equal to zero and you change an input to get there okay that's it and it stops and then you do the most important thing which is to stop recording the video and just in case you don't see it down there you can stop the video from here or if you have the developer tab you can stop recording it from here stop recording the video and then all you have to do is find the video now, if you want to do the simplest way to find the video, you can insert just about anything. You can insert a shape, you know, you can insert, uh, you can go to the developer and insert a, a, any of these buttons, and every single one of these can be attached to your video. Oops, I'm sorry, what did I do? Now, when you make this video, you right-click on it and you say assign macro. I'm going to assign it to the goal seek. Sorry, I have a bunch of other stuff open. So now when I change this input to 2 here, uh-oh, then I have to redo the goal seek. The other thing you can do, which is kind of better, is you can make a little drop-down box, and on that drop-down box you can go to format control and let's say... I want to change the first number from 0 to, to 100, I don't know why, and then I'm going to link it to this, I'm not even going to go to another sheet, so I'm going to link this to this one, okay, and then I'm going to see what the result is when I add 2 to that number, it's really a complicated thing, isn't it? Now what you do then is you just assign that macro, you assign that macro to the goal seek, okay, and then we just push it up and down. I hope it's going to work. Okay, so that's all we do. And the worst thing you have to do is when you look at this goal seek, you have to not be afraid to look at a macro. Don't be afraid to look at a macro. You go to assign macro, and then you go to edit. And you look at the macro. I don't know what happened here. Sorry about that. And this, you're going to change this difference to zero by, by you're going to make the difference zero by changing an input. Now, here's the problem. Excel is not smart enough that when you insert a line, 
it's not smart enough to know what's going to happen. So you click on this and you get a debug and you're very sad. So we're going to end this. And here's what you have to do. You have to name the cell. So I'm going to name this cell. I can name it input like this. I can go name it like this, input. I can just type input and then you have to press the enter key. And you have to press the enter key. And this difference I'm going to name too. But this time I'm going to press shift right arrow and then shift control F3 and I'm going to name that cell. And then if you want to see the names, everything's F3. I just press control F3. Make sure we have those names done. And then we go back to our button and we just go to assign the macro and we press edit and we put let's change let's make that difference equal to zero by changing the input. By the way, it doesn't even care if it's titles or what, what is it? Case sensitive. Okay, and now we rerun our button and it works. And we can rerun this one and it's giving us the input we need to make our target equal to 4. Okay. Changing that input. Is that working? I should be going up, sorry. Okay. It's a little bit slow for some reason today, okay? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I, and I, I could have attached this to the target as well. That would have actually been a little bit better to, to just uh, uh, attach this one to the target instead. So now I'm going to... I'm going to make, an, the, the video is going to continue, but it's going to be much more technical about applying this sort of thing in, in, a, uh, in the context of the problems with growth rate and WAC and a fundamental distortion that I believe is in the WAC formula when you have taxes and a, and a tax shield. All right, so just wait, I'm continuing. Now, I only have a couple more videos to do on this one. I've been making other much more interesting videos about project finance versus corporate finance, Sun Edison bankruptcy. I'm going to post these videos first because I want to get it done. And where we left off, in case you care about this, was that we computed a net of tax capital structure. And when we computed a net of tax capital structure, which was theoretically the correct way to measure debt in the presence of a uh, tax deduction, when we did a typic, when we, we, we got one answer, I'm going to press shift control seven. And then when we, uh, and we got exactly the same answer with no growth. Okay. Now what this video is going to be about is reconciling the two when you have growth, it's going to be making a simple goal seek, goal seek macro. The very first macro you probably should ever do, and perhaps the very last macro you ever would want to do. And all we're going to do is make sure that when we put the growth in, okay, when we put a little bit of growth in, now, just a minute, I seem to have the uh, iteration button on and there should be no circular references so did you see how slow it was I, I was going to turn it off but did you see how slow it was when we enable the iterations now I'm going to find the circular reference and just a minute Now, what we said is the real value of the company should have come, so this is going to demonstrate why you don't have to have a circular reference, by the way. The true value of the company, I think there was a hardware store in this. Okay, oh, not two ends. Okay, the true value is this. I just took this from up here. But then the computed value... Okay, 
we we get from when we put when we use this uh, 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 same cost of equity when we take this gross uh, method here the the value you compute is is different okay and what we need to do is essentially just increase the cost of equity and when we increase the cost of equity let's say i put 11.5 percent then we can see what the value and then we can put a difference Okay, so I'm going to do a basic, what we're going to do is compute that with a basic goal seek, and it demonstrates when you use the whack, when you're using, when you're unleveraging and re-leveraging the beta, you can do it all with a net method, and that's all totally theoretically correct. If you're going to use the whack, you're going to have to put somewhat higher of a, a, a cost of equity. And if I was really getting all worried about this, I would do it both ways, just like this. And then you can compute this difference. Now this difference has to be equal to zero by setting this number. So we can just set this number. Let's press shift control C to remember that that was a, a uh, uh, just a minute. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, man. Man, 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 man. Okay, just let me stop. Oh, that was embarrassing. Now, just I was on the right page. I just got nervous. Okay, so this number should be equal to zero. And when you use the goal seek, that's a good practice. And then what we're going to do is make a macro. We're going to attach the macro to this, and we have to name something. We have to name the difference. And here's how we can name the difference: select the two, Shift Control F3. And it names it from the left column. So now this is named difference. And if you press Control F3, you get all the things. So you should realize that F3 is the name, is the range name function. All right, that's that. Now we're going to change the ROE. The, so we can let's call this the. It, this is k, cost k e k e. Let's just call that k e. Okay, so we're going to change that. Now, all we do is we go down to and record a macro like you're going to do on your phone. And I'm going to call it Goal Seek. And we're going to set the difference. Whoops, I'm sorry. Uh-oh, I just made a mistake. I'm going to fix it later. I, I made that mistake on purpose. Okay, and go to Data. And after you go to Data, go to What If Analysis this and go to goal seek this is the very first macro i remember it was sometime in the 80s or 90s or no excel when did it excel come out okay and i couldn't figure it out I thought, oh this is cool this macro stuff and then you change the a fixed cell so this should be saying set a formula they should say formula to zero and you should always put a difference not always but it really helps by changing the cell okay and then we get our cost of equity. And our cost of equity went, you know, up pretty significantly. But if we put a zero growth rate in, it's gonna, the bias isn't going to be there. Well, it's a pain. Okay, now, once we do that, okay, let's look at the macro. Now, to look at the macro, if you don't have the developer here, you can go to Macros and View Macros. And we just named this Goal Seek. And you just press Edit. Or you could press, if you don't like to do that, you can press alternate F8. Okay, if you press alternate F11, it kind of does the same thing. Alternate F8 or alternate. Let's press alternate and F8. And then let's go to the goal seek and press the edit button. Now, the first thing, this is where I purposely put this in. And then we have to realize that this D48, that's the name of a cell in Excel. It's like you change your name. In some places in the world, you still change your name when you get married. So we change the name of D48, and that's different. And it could be named, you know, uh, uh, it, it can have capital letters or not. It's not case sensitive. 
and you put this to KE, and it would be so wonderful if you could just click a thing and have the range names show here. Maybe somebody's made some kind of thing to do that, and I can't. I'm not going to waste my time with that, I don't think. Because then I don't know how to do it, frankly. Okay, so now we have this. And now all we have to do is find the macro. So let's reduce the growth rate. Now you can attach a macro to just about anything. If you go to insert and you want a little shape, let's make a shape. Please, no smiley faces. Let's make a sh uh, uh, uh. And there's no frowny faces. What should we do? Let's make our dagger shape, okay? And we can then, you right click and with any picture, any graph or anything else, you assign the macro. And the reason I named the ranges, I'm sorry I didn't tell you, the reason it's so important to name the ranges is if you insert or delete a cell, it's the one thing you, where you really need range names because then, it, otherwise, it won't remember that it, you're supposed to change it from D48 to D49 and all that. And now you notice we have a difference here. So we just click on this one, and it gives us the difference of zero. Okay, now even better than this, how about I'm going to move this growth right here. This is really one of the reasons to do all our little gimmicks. You just right-click, and you go to Assign Macro, and you can assign that same Goal Seek macro to all sorts of things. And now suddenly the Goal Seek is kind of a helpful little thing. So then we put, if we put a zero number, we get back to our same cost of capital. And then if we've got a really kind of high growth assumption, you can see that in the WAC formula, you'd have to use a different number than you would use if you uh, didn't take account of the value of the debt. I think the best way to do it is just do everything at net of tax anyway. But, it, but everybody uses this gross debt in the capital structure, and there's this little distortion in there. I wish there wasn't. I wish I could prove that it was all a little bit simpler than this, but that's how you can do this. Now, of course, you can attach this goal seek to any one of these little buttons. And I'm going to save this file and call it Whack and Growth with Goal Seek. That's enough. Let's go to the next. I'm almost finished with this.